Hey everyone, welcome back to Topher Drive, where today we're going on a bit of a road trip in this 2024 Toyota Tacoma TRD off-road. Now we spent a bit of time a couple weeks ago in an SR5 extra cab, but this is a double cab with a five foot bed. It's finished in solar octane, which is a very bright and obnoxious orange color. And today we're taking it out to Octio Wells, I think is what it's called. I'm here with Charlie from Daily Motor and the Topher way up front. We're in Southern California and uh, it's about a three hour drive um, to this campsite. Apparently, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't go camping. I'm just here for the road trip aspect and I'm excited to spend a bit more time in this Tacoma. So what do you need to know about this before we get on the road? Well, it's powered by a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. It makes 278 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque. Power is sent to either the rear wheels or all four wheels via an eight speed automatic transmission, though Toyota will sell you a six-speed manual still with this TRD off-road variant of the Tacoma. As I said, we have a five-foot bed. We're not using that for anything today because we have everything in the massive hideout camper thing that Charlie has acquired. And uh, this is the double cab though, so you do have a bit of added practicality over the extra cab, of course being back seats, which we have folded up currently. And uh, you've got a bit of a storage compartment underneath there. We've got some food. I've got my suitcase, my camera bag, we have a cooler. And uh, it's interesting to me how these stay up because they just, I'm gonna regret doing that now probably. But there's no sort of locking mechanism. You secure them with this button, which is actually kind of cool. It's branded Toyota Tacoma. And they button here to the seat back. Oh, it's a little bit hard to do up, but there you go. We have cloth interior here in this TRD off-road trim. A couple of things that I need to note actually to you guys, this is very much a pre-production truck. So there are a number of materials inside this thing that are not production grade, but on the outside, these fender flares, as you can see, this thing's been off-roaded, but they're quite scratched up and uh, they are not production ready. Neither are the door panels and some of the other materials inside this cabin. Another thing different than the SR5 we were driving a couple weeks ago, this has coil springs on the back. We don't have leaf springs. And I'm curious to kind of compare the ride quality uh, from the SR5 here to this TRD off-road. The Topher has driven pretty much every trim of the Tacoma at this point, and he said that this one was his favorite. So. I trust his judgment on that, and uh, well, it looks like the other guys are ready to go. So let's hop in, start this thing up, and start our road trip out to the desert. Excited to take part in a road trip. Finally, it's been a minute since we've done like a proper road trip. So we're gonna go for a few hours here. Uh, I've got the trip reset from when I set off from the house, so I think I'm actually going to reset that one more time so we can get just kind of an accurate representation here of our trip as well as our fuel economy, which updates trip to trip, so we'll keep an eye on that. I went on the uh, EPA's website and I couldn't find any ratings for this, so we'll just have to see what kind of fuel economy we get here on our drive. Um, as far as amenities here in the TRD off-road, we have a couple of things that we didn't have in the uh, SR5. For one, TRD badges, very important. Got it on our stop-start button as well as our shift knob. But uh, to be real, jokes aside, we have this dial here, which we can toggle many different things. We have different drive modes, sport, normal, and eco. And uh, we can also use it for our crawl control, towing mode. And then we also have... Oh, MTS is unavailable. Okay, I for some reason probably have to be in a certain mode for that. Uh, rear locker as well as a sway bar disconnect. So a good amount of off-road amenities here in this car. Truck, excuse me, this truck. Um, we have a 14-inch infotainment display. It's Toyota's uh, new unit that's in pretty much everything. Fully digital cluster, leather wrapped steering wheel, heated seats, automatic climate control, all the good stuff. So stick this thing into drive and let's get started here on the trip. Are you ready to get started on our I adventure? Am, but now Amos has decided it is now a good time for him to start his <laughs> video. So he is going to go and do a lot and do After he said that he didn't want to start his video. It's because we let him sit and think for too long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Well, then I'm going to show the viewers the engine bay. What engine? Would you like to Would you like to do it's this so with me? Small. It's a two point. There he goes. That's the no. new Lexus GX. I uh, have a two point seven liter in my truck. I only have it. So you just said what sort of engine is it? But you already knew. Wow. Do you think <laughs> Do you think maybe this has been off road before? I don't know. It's been rainy lately. <laughs> well, Jeez. we we mustn't be worried about getting it dirty. Yeah, let's let's not look at that actually. But no hood struts, kind of disappointing. I bet the your... GMC has hood struts. Oh, okay. I also bet the GMC probably costs like thirty thousand dollars. Probably does. This starts at like forty-two grand, but I suspect that this one is more like fifty. Probably. Yeah. How much do you think you pay for the color? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll follow you. Sounds good. So our first stop today is forty-seven miles down the road. We're stopping at an grocery store to get some food and things for camping. And we're going to let Charlie take up the rear because he has to, apparently by California laws, only drive 55 miles per hour. So Chris and I aren't interested in that, so we are going to leave a man behind in true Top Gear form. left here even though mine says to go straight so we'll see honestly under super super fresh first impressions on this truck it definitely rides better than the sr5 on leaf springs i was looking forward to driving this truck with a little bit different suspension because leaf springs they're always a little bit bouncy they're always a little bit stiff so i don't know just having this more modern suspension system on this truck makes it feel a lot nicer Good torque from that 2.4 liter I-Force. I've got my little boost gauge there on the left. Also, I couldn't get wireless CarPlay to work this morning, so I've got my phone plugged into the side of the infotainment screen, which is why you guys see this cord dangling here. Also, I love the steering weight on this truck. It's super maneuverable around parking lots. I always love a bit of a lighter feel for a car that I'm going to be daily driving and with a truck like this it definitely makes sense. Steve McQueen. Additionally with this TRD off-road Tacoma we have the JBL sound system which I don't know if it's fully in production form yet or not but I did listen to it a bit on the way to our starting point, and it has a lot more bass, a lot more subwoofer than the bass sound system that we had in the SR5 last week. Honestly, even for being a pre-production, this is a pretty quiet truck, and these tires, I was expecting them to kind of howl a bit more, and uh, not super howly. the Topher is going to, yep, he is going to. Let's see if we can keep up. <laughs> he thought that light was going to be red. <laughs> great power, great torque, and smooth shifts from this 8-speed automatic. Charlie is gone. This new Tacoma is shaping up to be a great truck. I'm really excited to drive a non-pre-production uh, version, probably later this year or next year. I'm sure they'll be putting those into the fleet. But for now, we uh, get to get you guys some super early impressions here on this thing. Let's take a moment to observe our NVH once we merge here onto the highway. I love that little bit of turbo whistle there. Let's try out some of our driver aids here while we are just chilling on the highway. We have pretty much a full suite here in this TRD off-road Tacoma. Uh, okay, 
This is like the sixth different car that I've driven this week, so I'm just trying to recalibrate my brain into Toyota. Okay, let's see. So, yeah, that's right. Just one press of a button there. We will lock onto the back of this Lexus GX550. We can adjust our distance here. Set that to the closest distance. We can toggle on and off our lane tracing. See how that's doing. Lane tracing has gotten better in the recent years. It was kind of terrible when it came out, but it does a pretty dang good job now. I mean, I'm trusting it to keep me in the lane here. Let's go about 10 seconds before it yells at you to give some input. You can see here, even at the closest distance from me to the car in front, um, it does give a pretty good following distance there. So no real worries, but it is nice to be able to expand that for say, if you're on like a 55 mile an hour road and you really want to give the car in front of you some distance, you are able to do that. All right, let's ditch the cruise control for a bit. Nice load on torque. Don't have to drop a gear to initiate a lane change, to initiate a pass rather. And this is good, you know, sometimes with trucks, you have to make a lot of corrections going down the highway. You get a little bit of that so-called Cadillac weave going on, but this car tracks really straight. It feels nice. It's not super loud. Yeah, this will be good. I'm, I'm excited for this. But man, I'm excited to get into this Lexus GX550. I have not yet driven it, so that'll be fun. <laughs> we look so silly with these, P <laughs> these POV setups on. Just like as people driving down the highway, like look at him right now. Okay, be serious for a second. I love the steering wheel, the like sort of perforated leather on here feels nice. The SR5 we had in Michigan had a heated steering wheel which was nice. This one does have heated seats, which will be good. We do still have manual cloth seats here in this TRD off-road trim. I'm gonna settle in here to this TRD off-road Tacoma and we'll keep an eye on the fuel economy. I'm gonna test out the sound system and I'll update you guys once I have spent just a bit more time in this thing. We are now off the main expressway and onto a bit of a smaller coastal highway, about eight minutes from the grocery store where we are making our first stop. And I've got to say, this Tacoma has been a treat. And I'm glad I spent last week in the SR5 because it makes me appreciate this TRD off-road just that much more. There are a number of things in here that I think advantage this, of course, over the SR5 as well as just being a double cab. There's a lot less plastic in here. We actually have a back seat, there's carpet, there's other, you know, just things back there that don't have the opportunity to make rattles. And it it's just quieter in general. I feel like there's a lot less uh, a lot less road noise in this car, and there could be uh, more sound deadening here in this TRD off-road. I wouldn't be surprised to learn if there was. Let's see how we are doing as far as fuel economy goes. 29.5. Um, I reset this as soon as I shut the camera off. So this is mostly highway as well as this short coastal road. So if you are going to be traveling strictly highway, uh, look for somewhere from mid to high 20s. I was reading anywhere from like 25 to, oh, I suppose now 29, but pretty impressive here from this little uh, 2.4 liter turbo. So the seat is pretty comfortable. The ride in this thing is super forgiving. The lane tracing assist does great. The adaptive cruise does great. Um, I really don't have any complaints about this car. The sound system is not fantastic. Um, if anything, it kind of just sounds exactly like the one in the SR5, the base sound system, but um, some extra subwoofer added. If anything, I would just say that this 2.4 liter is a little bit grainy. It's a little bit noisy, but it's got good power. It's got good torque. So I'm pretty satisfied with it otherwise. Yeah, I'm a happy boy in this truck. This is kind of shaping into being my favorite truck in this segment. And I did say that in my video a couple weeks ago or whenever the last Tacoma video went up that uh, thinking this is gonna be right back up to its former spot at Class Leader. The thing with Toyotas is they just, they make them for so long and then they just become stale. 
but this is a nice fresh taste of modern Toyota and I think they've absolutely nailed this. I think they've done everything just about perfectly here with this new truck. I'll be curious to see how the seat uh, ends up treating me here. Of course it is cloth. It's a pretty soft, the actual foam in the seat, um, soft material. And we do actually have a power lumbar. It's a completely manual seat, but I've got a switch down here for my lumbar and it inflates, deflates super quickly, pretty aggressively too. You can really get that to support your back, which is nice. Going through a bit of a flood currently. Oh yeah, now that, that lumbar does the trick. I'm gonna leave that extended out a bit. Reading 209 miles on the range with an almost full tank of fuel. We've done 45 miles. I think that number is going to increase with us doing quite a bit of highway driving. So we'll keep an eye on that as well as our fuel economy. Yeah, we dropped down here to 27.7. We've been doing a bit of traffic. So I think an overall combined figure, somewhere around 24 or 25 MPG, it's probably going to be pretty realistic here for this Tacoma. But as you guys can hear, this thing is pretty dang quiet. There's like not even anything rattling in here. And this is a pre-pro. So props to Toyota for assembling this thing properly. <laughs> I think any rattles that we are hearing is just like my suitcase and the, the couple of bags that we have in the back. The interior seems pretty dang well put together here in this truck. Let's pull into this complex. What do we have? Walmart, Vons, Starbucks, Denny's, Chase. And there's a super cut so could get my mop cut off my head while we're here. Yeah, pretty maneuverable, good size. This is just like the proper size for trucks, in my opinion. Fantastic backup camera, look at that. Great resolution, taking up all 14 inches. All right, we have electronic parking brake. Doesn't look like it auto applies. It may if you're on some sort of elevation, but not where I'm at currently. Cool. All right, let's shut this off. Let's go get some groceries and then we'll continue our road trip here. In the Tacoma TRD off-road. I feel like James May in the last uh, Grand Tour episode where he had that very slow car. Oh, yeah, and we just left you behind. Are you a towing enthusiast? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this I is know. great. Yeah. This is really your well. special favorite thing. Mm -hmm. Things have gotten slightly damp since uh, we walked into the store, but leaving now with a truck full of groceries, or multiple trucks full, I suppose, ready for our little camping excursion. So, back behind Charlie and the GMC and the, uh, the hideout. acceleration and braking test there. Before I take the camera off again, I wanted to bring up, I think the best part about this new Tacoma, and that is simply how much better it is than the outgoing truck. I remember a couple years ago, we had a bright highlighter green Tacoma TRD Pro. And while that looked awesome, and while the old truck did have a lot of charm, just simply because it was still so old time rock and roll, there's something nice about having something that is of the current decade, and this truck smooths out so many things that were wrong with the old truck, primarily the gearbox. I mean, the old one had an ancient five-speed automatic that would constantly search between fourth and fifth gear while you were on the highway, so you constantly had to listen to that anemic V6 switching from fourth to fifth gear with the TRD exhaust. It was not a good thing. This eight-speed completely gets rid of that. And also the low-down torque from this Turbo 4, much better. So as far as powertrain goes, they've, they've really just improved this thing to no end. But anyways, gonna just keep on trucking here in the Tacoma and uh, we'll probably give you guys one last update before we get all the way to our final destination at the park in the desert. But I wanna just check on our fuel economy real quick before I let you guys go, give you an update on that. 25.1 is our current number there for fuel economy. I don't really have anything else educated to say to you guys, but look at this view. I'm like driving in a cloud right now. Once we get up here a little bit higher, it'll look even cooler. 
and I've got the Lexus GX550 to look at, and I've got this really cool GMC HE4X AEV thing to look at behind me. This is just, oh my gosh, look at this. I love when it's cloudy in the mountains because it just, it's like you're in a dream. Look at that. Tacoma feels pretty stout up here on these twistier roads. Not having to work super hard or anything. Lock to lock on the steering, of course, is a little far, so got a bit of steering angle in these corners, but it's a truck, so what do you expect? We do also have damp roads here, so taking it easy. to slow us down. Ugh, look at that. All right, that was it. Uh, goodbye. We have pulled over to swap vehicles so this will be the last update for a second here on the Tacoma the only real thing I want to add is that we were going up some mountainous roads so our fuel economy is down to 21.3 and I have actually started to get a little bit fatigued from this seat so just a couple more simple impressions but overall this thing has been fabulous it's been super confidence inspiring on these wet mountain roads hasn't felt like a chore to drive and overall I'm super happy with this new Tacoma Man, those are some cool roads. I know, some great roads. Yeah. Cool guys, well we'll check up with you probably one more time, give you some final, final thoughts on the Tacoma. But as for now, I'm still pretty happy with this thing. After a day in the desert and a day spent camping, which is something that I don't generally do, but you know, I did it and I couldn't have done it without this trusty Tacoma. It got me out to the desert, got me around the desert, and it got me back here mostly. Anyways, we have just over an hour to go in the trip, but I thought we would debrief on this and give you guys some final thoughts while I fill this up with some petrol. Uh, for the trip back. So let's do that now. Try not to smash the door on this pillar. That's good. There's always good ambient noise in my videos. And a Chrysler Crossfire doing a cold start as well. It's interesting in California, the pumps have this little like suction guy on them. Probably for some sort of eco reason, I would assume. Oh yeah. Okay, maybe we'll debrief in the car because I can't even hear myself think right now, so stand by. We've got the Topher pulling the camper here. Charlie is somewhere in the GX, there he is. So what's this thing been like to live with for the past couple of days? Uh, well, to give you guys a bit of a wrap up and a bit of a conclusion on the Tacoma. In my opinion, it's kind of been the hero of this trip because despite the fact that it's very pre-production, I mean, you can tell by these door panels, and uh, the fact that it's covered in sand, you can see that we did a good amount of off-roading and it never skipped a beat, it never got stuck, it never broke, it just kept going and it did all of the things. And you know what? It's my favorite to drive out of all three of these vehicles. Sure, the Lexus GX is very cozy, it's got a great sound system, 
but I almost feel like it's trying too hard. It's doing too much. It's always trying to compensate with the suspension and the electric power steering and everything. Whereas this car, this truck, sorry, this is just an honest truck. It's just, it, it goes where you point it. It doesn't complain. The, the ride on these coil springs is fantastic. It's been decently efficient. Prior to going off-roading, it was doing like 25 MPG or something. And, you know, no complaints there. It's got a great 14-inch infotainment system. And it's just easy. It's straightforward. And I love that with the new generation of Tacoma, they didn't try too hard. They didn't put anything in here that you don't need. And this might be the trim to have, this TRD off-road trim, because it isn't, of course, the Limited or the TRD Pro, but I feel like it splits the difference between the SR5 and the upper trims nicely. Obviously, that's the point of this. It's supposed to split the difference, but it does it in a very charming way. And for that, I really, really have enjoyed my time here with this Tacoma TRD off-road. As far as road tripping goes, it's been nice. As I said, ride very good. The seat, I was a little fatigued, and I am actually starting to get a bit fatigued after about an hour and a half. So over anything over like two hours, you might need to get out, stretch, take a break, but uh, the seat is decent enough. And like I mentioned earlier, you do have that power adjust uh, lumbar to support your back if you're a bit old uh, like me. But I think that just about wraps it up here for our trip in the Tacoma TRD off-road. Make sure you comment below if there's anything I missed. Also, make sure you guys go and check out my commute to the airport, actually to come out to California in the SR5 Tacoma. That'll give you some more just kind of basic information on the truck and on a lower trip level. But as for now, that's gonna wrap it up for us. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I've had a good time. I did camping and well, see you in the next one. Take care.